Welcome to Driving the Lane with Randy Kryenbrink and Chuck Rowe. Now, Driving the Lane. Welcome to Driving the Lane. Randy Kryenbrink and Chuck Rowe, the show where we talk about mostly one thing and one thing only, and that is... Panther basketball. Now, it's important that we remind you that even though we are the official UNI basketball show for the Panther Collective, our comments may not reflect the feelings of our friends at UNI. However, Randy is a former player. And I have this really nice, I mean, you can't really see it very well. I guess I can stand up a little bit. I mean, got this nice quarter zip for Christmas this past year from one of my boys and um, super warm. Love it. So got a little, got a little pocket there. His little zip pocket. Oh yeah. I think you could put like a, on the other side here, I think you could put like a cell phone in there if you want to or something. Right. Right. It's handy. Just in case. Love it. What about you? Is that just, is that a you and I quarter zip as well? No, this is just a this is just a generic Nike quarter zip. I might I might go to some somebody to have them put a little something on there for me. I can't decide if I need I need to get some more Cedar Falls Tiger stuff too, Chuck. Uh, now that my kids are getting Cedar Falls yeah. Tigers, you know what I mean? No, not really. Um, I yeah. do with Noir Blue, <laughs> but that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, let's so just bad, skip to that. We have a great show for everyone today. Uh, joining us today is going to be Rachel and Caber from the UNI Women's Team. We also have the Panther Collective Questions of the Week, and of course, the Financial Architects Quote of the Week. Let's get started. Randy, excited to have with us today. Drum roll, please. Are you? It's kind of a roll? weak. It's kind of a weak drum roll, Chuck. We need to figure something else out on that. Why we need to start over? Uh, yeah. Drum roll, please. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> After 10 years, you think we would have a drum roll. Yeah, you think you would. So, <laughs> <laughs> Rachel and Kayba is joining us from the UNI Women's Team. Thanks for being with us today. Thank Thanks you. for having us. So let's start out with something really easy. Um, we're going to name all your teammates one by one, and you're going to let us know which ones you like more than others. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> so, but, um, but really, though, you've had a great win streak going on. Tell us about the feelings of getting those wins after maybe some tough losses. Um, honestly, it's um super rewarding. Honestly, um, just to know that we had a super tough non-conference, and now to see in conference that we've learned lessons from the non-conference and just bringing it into conference and showing them, hey, like yeah, our record might not be the best right now, but guess what? Like we're a great team. We're gonna show up play our best every single game and yeah yeah I think sometimes after like a lot of losses in a row like you can you kind of get down on yourself in a way and so just like getting a few wins and then they can really build off each other and and that's really important for the conference season as well to just get win after win and just see how many you can get um because we obviously have a really good conference so any win is a good win so so what what did the coaches what did the coaches like come back to or what did they reiterate to you guys during that during that stretch where you obviously took a couple couple losses and then you went on the road and took a couple losses that even double magnifies it right so so what did the coaches say in practice and maybe one-on-one sessions with you guys I think that they really like broke it down back to just like the fundamentals like the fundamental things that we can work on like simple things as to just boxing out like to not like win the re- or to not lose the rebounding battle and just stuff like that, making good passes, um, working on getting more shots up every day, that kind of thing. Yeah, especially with our um, like free throw and field goal percentage, we gave ourselves goals, and we weren't quite reaching them. So, like kind of what Kava said, like getting extra shots in every day, getting um, just doing all the little stuff, like she said, and honestly, just saying, hey, you know, it's a tough stretch right now but it's going to pay off in the end during that time that randy was referring to with the coaches you're talking about what you do as a team to be better but what about as individuals what did you learn about yourselves during that time when you went through that losing streak what kind of things did you challenge yourself to that you said i need to do better at this in order for us to start winning um for me it was kind of like reflecting on the things that i can do to like help this team like grow so kind of just like reflecting after each game, after each road trip, 
that what are the things that I can do to like help this team? And then you like put that into work and then go in the gym and get those extra reps in, whether that's extra conditioning, shooting, like free throws, um, an extra weight lift, like that kind of thing. I think that they wanted like each person to kind of reflect on that and put in like the extra work to help figure out what's going on, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I agree with Kayla. It's kind of just a self-reflection and going in and pretty much seeing the work pay out. So, so tell tell us one thing outside of the extra weightlifting, the extra shots. So, what's what's one other thing outside of basketball where you kind of get away from it? And so, what do you do when you need to just get away from basketball for a bit? Do you hang out with somebody? Do you go to to a pizza party? Do you go bowling? Like, what is it that you guys do to get away from basketball and just re- refresh or, or or put your mind back at ease? Yeah, honestly, just hanging out with friends. Um, I mean, obviously school, then basketball, but um, if I just need a break, then I just, you know, go like hang out with my roommate or go hang out with, you know, some other friends on the team and just, yeah. I think I like to definitely hang out with friends. Um, All my roommates are like on the basketball team, so I hang out with them a lot, but yeah. we can kind of like get away from basketball in that way, which is really nice or just go shopping or something fun like that. Cause I like to do that. Well, they say what makes a good team is that they beat the teams that they're supposed to beat. Now you ladies took care of some teams like Indiana state, Evansville, Valpo, et cetera. Um, you almost, you were this close to Missouri state. What is it that makes this team so good? I mean, you were supposed to be number one for uh, the conference and we expect that to happen. What makes you so good? Um, Honestly, I think it's just, our team chemistry and we're all super close. We all obviously have the skills to, you know, get wins and stuff, but I think it's just how close we are as a team and just being able to come together. Like if we're, you know, obviously basketball is a game of runs. So if we're in a downward stretch, then honestly, I think it's just us coming together and being like, Hey, you know, this next three to five minutes, let's push, you know, let's get, you know, on that upward streak and, Let's go to work. I think that um, our team, like we all kind of know our roles, which really helps. And I think that we're like, we're all like different puzzle pieces and trying to like fit them together to like get a team where like we are like unstoppable in a way, but we're still figuring that out each day. But I think that everyone really knows their role and can execute that in the game. Randy, you could tell that these are such great team players. I mean, I was hoping that Kay would be just like, ah, oh, it's me. That's because of me. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, uh, well, Randy brought up friendships earlier, and you two have talked about friendships a bit. Kayba, um, I want to talk about you and Riley for a moment. You both jump on from Marion. Uh, was there a point in high school where you were like, okay, let's just deaf and do this? Or or did you each kind of let you let each other do your own thing and quietly communicate to each other what was going on? Um. I guess, well, I committed pretty early, so that was kind of, like, regardless of anything. And then I think, like, during her recruiting process, she definitely, like, was asking me questions about uh, you and I and that kind of thing and just trying to see, get some more information. But I didn't really know exactly. I kind of had a feeling that she was going to come here um, when she committed a long time ago. I don't know how long that was. But uh, so, yeah, it was kind of, like, 50-50. Now, you said you committed early. Um, what was it that was with you and I that made you think, like, you know what, this is the school I just need to be at? It just felt so, like, right for me. Um, it's only, like, an hour away from my home, which was really nice. And then just the staff, like, they just felt like family to me. Like, they, they were always, like, really honest. Um, and they like to joke around, which I like. And it just felt really – I felt comfortable here. Um, I like the culture and the family aspect and – of that so so the recruiting process um we we talked to a lot of the student athletes about that right and uh, and you and i does feel like a family it's small enough but yet big enough you get to play a lot of schools a lot of opponents you go you go play iowa they come play you all that fun stuff so in, in that recruiting in that recruiting process um who when you came to campus right they kind of pair you up with probably a, a couple other student athletes to show you the campus um, who was kind of your mentors? And then kind of now that 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 you get to be that person, um, 
who have you kind of brought under your wing to help out with a little bit? Well, mine is easy. It's Kava and Jibo. And I think Maya was there a little bit. I mean, they brought most of the team out for me. I mean, mine was just a couple years ago since yeah. I transferred, but. Um, mine was Nicole Krager. I think that she, I always like shot with her and hung out with her more. Like she was my roommate for like the whole year, my fresh or like my sophomore season, she was my roommate for the whole year, like at the hotel. So I kind of just got a lot of time with her and because she knew a lot about the programs, which was really nice for me. Did any of you play with some of your current teammates or new current teammates during your high school years or? Did you, Rach? No. I just played, I played AU with uh, Maya and Shatia. So they were on my AU team. And then that's about it. I played like against some of them in high school. So like Grace, I played in high school and Emerson was, I didn't play Emerson in high school, but. So, yeah. so to, uh, to come off of Chuck's question there a little bit. So when you were like in fourth grade or fifth grade, did you like say, Hey, basketball is going to be my sport or, or were you guys like multi-sport athletes in high school? And then when did basketball become like, wow, that's what I want to do when I grow up? Yeah. Um, for me, honestly, I don't think I made like the choice of just basketball until about probably eighth grade. I was really in between basketball and soccer for most of my life. Um, and then in high school, volleyball became like a, oh, I could do this too. But um, I feel like I probably chose basketball in eighth grade. I think I chose basketball a little younger. I think it was always my favorite sport. Um, like I played it the most since I was like really little. I was always playing basketball probably like the most year round. But I also played volleyball, softball, um, soccer. And I did track in middle school, I think. Um, but basketball was always like my number one. And I knew that that's what I wanted to do. You know, it's kind of interesting, Chuck. We have a lot of uh, a lot of the women's team on here, and a lot of them have a little common denominator with soccer. So do you guys ever put the basketball on the floor and maybe bust out a little soccer game during practice, or coach coach doesn't allow that? I don't think she'll allow that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Too many sprained ankles at that point. Right. Yeah. Well, Rachel, you were averaging nearly a double-double each game. What made you transition over to you and I, knowing that you might not get those same numbers? Um, honestly, I, I honestly expected like that I wasn't going to still average a, almost a double double, but, um, pretty much what kind of drove me is that ever since I was young, no matter what sport it was, um, I always wanted to be a D1 athlete and pretty much I am super grateful to Bemidji, obviously. Um, they kind of took me under their wing and just help teach me and then um I ended up graduating three years from there and I was like you know what this is my opportunity I, let's go make the best of it and whatever happens happens so yeah and were there other schools you were considering and if so what made you decide on you and I yeah there were definitely a couple other um colleges that I was uh considering but I feel like you and I um, when I came and visited here, the team um, was just super close and connected and felt like a family, kind of like what Kava said, um, which was super nice. And that was one of my big things. I was like, I really want the team to be like super close because at Bemidji, we were all super close and the coaches were super nice and honest and um, all that stuff. So that made it feel really nice. And then it's also only three hours from home. Which, you know, some people's like, oh, only three hours. That's like still a long ways. But in comparison to Bemidji, that was eight hours. So this is nothing. <laughs> and, and again, where are you from nice. originally? Um, just south of Madison, Wisconsin. So yep. we're actually in a warmer climate for you. Yeah. A little. <laughs> a little. <laughs> well, you and Grace are an amazing one-two punch. Um, the nickname Two-Headed Monster has been used for center combos all across America. I want to give each of you five <laughs> seconds to just kind of think oh, of gosh. what would that duo nickname be for the rest of the season? Got five oh, seconds. Oh, gosh. You got it, Rach. 
What? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I have no idea. The height of these two ladies, what they, the dominance they bring to the table. What what nickname would you give this group? Man, what did they call? Uh, was it David Robinson and uh, uh, for the San Antonio Spurs? Did they have? Yeah. Uh, well, they they, they probably went the Twin Towers route. That's another popular. Nickname. Yeah. But they played at the same time uh, a lot, but. Yeah. Okay. So before well, this, let's say in the next two weeks, we are going to challenge everyone to come up with a a, a duo nickname for Rachel and Grace. Um, now, yeah. now Grace is obviously a very important part of the team. Um, Rachel, tell us a little bit about that locker room talk with some of the front court players and how you all rose to the occasion while she was out. Yeah, honestly, um, like when she went down, obviously we all knew that we had to step up in a bunch of different ways, whether I mean in rebounding, scoring, just pretty much amplifying our roles on the team. Um, I mean, we all came together and we were like, hey, look, we have to do this for her. Um, like your role, you know what that is. Now do it, you know, even more. So, I mean, that was, I think, another thing where we really reflected on what our roles were. And that was when we were like, hey, look, we have to get in the gym more. We have to do extra things so we, you know, make up for um, Grace being out. But honestly, I mean, the coaches were even saying, yes, like Jeebo being out, not ideal. But that, like, we're still a great team, you know, and we're going to come across, you know, different um like indifferences throughout the season and we have to rise to the occasions and um we have to figure out ways to you know get it done i went to several of the games and watch you guys play and um you know without grace out there i mean the front court really you you had a couple great games out there where i think i remember you scoring a good 15 16 points a game i mean it was amazing so amazing. um so great yes. job um and then Kaba. Does coach ever sit you down and say, okay, here's the deal. You're going to be a more focal point of this offense this year. You're going to be play a more important role on defense, et cetera. Or is that something that just kind of comes natural year by year and you just know that it's your turn to step up? Um, I feel like maybe it's a little bit of both. I think, you know, um, kind of each year, like what next year will kind of look like a little bit more. But we also uh, have like meetings with coach. I think the postseason meeting – uh, we have and we have like meetings throughout like sometimes summer and preseason and she's she definitely like lets you know like hey like you gotta keep working keep putting work in um you're gonna play good minutes this year you know that type of thing so I think she's really like honest with that and you also kind of like have an idea in a way so I would say a little bit of both I like that. So yeah, obviously, obviously communication with the coaches is huge, right? So one of our, uh, one of our trick questions or one of our fun questions is, so you're uh, drinking your pregame chocolate milk, which I don't think probably happens, but we're drinking our pregame chocolate milk and you spill like a bunch down the front of your Jersey before you go out and play, which coach are you going to go to and say, Hey coach, I just, just stained my Jersey. What do I need to do? We would probably go to Darian, like our yeah. director of ops, because she always <laughs> has extra jersey or stain remover or something that we can mm -hmm. try to get that out really quick. So you're not going to go to a coach. You're just going to go straight to the straight to the shout out. Straight to solve the problem right away. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, give me two seconds here. I'm going to. Can everyone see this? Okay. Now, as athletes, you're out there sweating hard on the court. During the game, you toss your hair in a ponytail or a headband and call it good for the most part. But who's that one player or two that can't settle for that? Like, they need to make sure their hair is looking perfect either during the game or even when you're trying to head out to dinner and trying to get out the door. They're there just trying to perfect everything. Um, I would say Kaba. Um, <laughs> I say that because she always has to have her um, gold earrings in. Yep. If she's not playing basketball. So, like, for yeah. example, um, we played a game last night. We had a talk with coaches after the game. And then usually we go out and see, like, our parents um, on the court. Well, she has to put her gold earrings in prior to seeing Can't everybody. go anywhere without the gold hoops. So she always has to have the hoops in. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, is that a fair <laughs> assessment? Yes. 
Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the deal. And, 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 you know, Randy and I get this, Kaba. I mean, people just naturally have to look good. I mean, R- Randy and I, we come across this all the time. Haters are going to hate. Um, people like us just naturally, you know, get in front of folks and we just have to look good. So um, <laughs> <laughs> you look good, you play good. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Kayla, if you could tell us the history about these hoops that you wear. I just, I don't know. I love having gold hoops in. Like I have to have them in. It's just part of my everyday look. So when I'm like not playing is the only time that I can't wear them. So I just put them in right away after. Cause I'm like, I have to have my gold hoops in. I don't now, know. <laughs> now what year was this during high school or college? When did this become a standard issue for you? Well, I always had earrings like in high school, but my freshman year, I think I actually wore silver hoops, but then I switched oh. over to gold hoops and then it's never changed since. So oh. I always have the gold hoops. I don't You're know. kind of like moving up. Yeah. And then when you I'm graduate gonna... and go to the WNBA, it's going to be like platinum Ooh. hoops. <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, you know, we'll let you, I'll let you know about the hoops in the future. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> So, so which leads into the question about superstition, right? Um, so are either one of you like superstitious, like other than our gold hoops? I don't really think anything super, I mean, a little superstitious sometimes, like, oh, uh, like if I put like an ankle brace on the side of the locker, then like that's going to go on this foot. But like, if I switch it up, I don't really care. Um, okay. I feel like the only really pregame routine we have is all like, go get coffee i feel like that's really the only thing Mm. not like super superstitious but yeah rachel what's the difference between um a routine and superstition then what if you don't have coffee would that bother you um me personally it wouldn't bother me like i really wouldn't care there's some people on the team i think it might bother but it would bother me yep (laughs) <laughs> i have to have coffee <laughs> but that's so it's not a superstition for you Kaba, as much as it is you need the caffeine you're saying i think i don't know i mean i like go a day without it and i'm like okay but i just feel like i'm just yeah i think i need the caffeine and well, then I to do. randy's point what what is that superstition that you might have i don't i also don't have one I guess okay. my routine then on home games, I'll get like a, I'll go get a smoothie and a coffee. Mm-hmm. So kind of routine, I guess. Cause okay. I don't do it on away games. I just get a coffee on away games. Well, it's time for the Panther collective questions of the week, where we ask you questions directly from the fans. Favorite Missouri Valley conference school to go play at. Missouri State was fun because it was pretty loud there, and I kind of mm-hmm. like that. I like Illinois State's gym. Um, Belmont was also really, was really fun. fun. I was going to say Belmont. It's probably out there. Uh-huh. Did a nice gym and just nice campus. So I liked it. Nice campus, yeah. Interestingly enough, um, one of the questions is very similar to what Randy just asked, and that is um, when you want to play against another team, you bring your best to the table, right? Who's that one opponent, like as far as an individual player, that you just cannot wait to match up against for that day. Drake is the team I'm excited to play, but there's not really yeah. like an individual player, I would say. Yeah, I'd probably have to agree with that. I would say we all have like certain te- like with every team, we all have people where it's like, oh yeah, like let's stop them or like, hey, let's, you know, we have like certain game plans towards specific people. So I feel like for like guards and posts, it's different because obviously like I won't be guarding, you know, a point guard, <clears throat> but um, so I'm just excited to go against the posts, I guess, and just kind of show them, you know, who I am, what I can do and try and stop them pretty much. So yeah. I agree. I was like before each game, uh, we always are like, there's like someone on the team or something that we're always like, we got to stop them. Like they can't score that kind of thing. So I feel like it's kind of game by game that we kind of have like certain people that were like, all right, they can't score in this game or something kind of mm-hmm. like that. 
Well, as Randy remembers back in the day when he was playing, that college athletes need to be their best. They need to work out hard. They need to make sure they're eating the right foods and um, not just eating ding-dongs all day, right? So what is that one cheat day meal that you have or dessert that you can never say no to? Like if my roommate's like, hey, you want to go get ice cream? I'm probably going to be like, yeah, you know what? I haven't had ice cream in a while. Let's go get some, you know? <laughs> you should hang out with Randy more often. That would be his answer probably. <laughs> I love ice cream. Um, mine, I don't know. I really like puppy chow from the gas station. Oh, wow. So if I'm like very specific. A- <laughs> After she gets her coffee from the gas station. <laughs> it is specific, but I really like puppy chow and that's what I'll go get. So yeah, not homemade, but like pre-made from the so this could be an this could lead to an NIL deal, but is there a specific gas station that you want your puppy chow from? yeah it's casey's oh <laughs> almost right. famous well, we'll for their it. pizza but really for their puppy chow, for their puppy puppy chow. chow. you gotta try it <laughs> so, <laughs> so besides anything that has to do with sports what's that one hobby that you're really good at that no one really knows about Riddle. <laughs> oh <laughs> they know they have one they just don't want to say it cave is I like i, I love playing the tuba but <laughs> Like, I mean, yes. in high school, I played the French horn, but I haven't played that in five okay. years now. <laughs> okay. There you go. Um, I guess I can juggle. It's not really a hobby, but I can juggle too. Okay. Oh gosh, if there, were, if I would have known this, I would have mailed you guys some like rubber balls or something <laughs> beforehand, and we could have had a little duel, right? Now. A little comp- competition on juggling. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. One 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 question too that the fans uh they they will want to know about is your majors right so when you graduate what do you what do you want to do when you grow up? I well um my majors I'm getting my master's in biology um and pretty much what I'm looking to do um after school and once I graduate is go to dental school and become an orthodontist so yeah wow I um. Initially was like just majoring in biology and then I kind of finished that pretty quick. So I picked up psychology as a double major, Um, but I actually want to go into nursing. So after um, I finish basketball, I can do nursing school and I'll probably do like a year accelerated program for that. Now, you both gave some very good realistic answers. If you could hit the reset button and just take a job that would be totally ridiculous, like maybe you could be an astronaut or maybe you could be an underwater, you know, diver for the military, like some, or, or maybe you want to be like the public relations director for your favorite sports team. Like, what is that one, like, just dream, 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 dream job that you wish you could do if you could hit that reset button? I feel like I would do something with like design or like planning. I like to like plan stuff or like a wedding planner for like in like California or something would be really fun. Oh. I would probably be like a interior designer or something like that. Um, I really like, you know, envisioning certain spaces and kind of just decorating them. I'm actually doing that um, with my house back in Madison right now. So I'm redoing my room and then yeah. over once I graduate, then I'll be redoing the bathroom there too. So okay. I'd be an interior designer. Very nice. Very nice. Cool. And um cool. and once again, I'm always appreciative of uh of Kaba's like very specific detail oriented like locations of where she like California, like not just a planner, but like in California specifically. <laughs> yeah. Then uh and then Rachel, we'll have to I need to invite you to my office because if you saw my office, it's a mess. So I might have to <laughs> use your services in the future. Um so now you're both on the cooking channel. And you can invite one of your coaches to join you to be a pair to win the championship of cooking for whatever show it's going to be. Which coach do you choose and why? I'm trying to think of who, like, I think can cook. Right. You know, I think that I'm going to bring Oakland. Mm-hmm. I feel like he can just, I feel like somehow he's a good cook that we don't know about. He would be great at macaroni and macaroni and cheese. I'm sure he right. would be good at that. Right. Yeah, macaroni and cheese. Yeah. I think that he like grilled us burgers one time, and they were, they were good. Wow, that's true. 
If you brought Coach Warren, you could bring her mom too, and she's a good cook. True. <laughs> there you go. I'll take Coach Warren. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Good answer. Mm-hmm. Good answers. Helps with the playing time, I'm sure, in the future. Yeah. So, <laughs> always name the head coach. So, okay. One last question um, from, from the fans out there, and that is, if you could pick one coach and one coach only to help you prepare for a test, the most important final that you have, and that one coach is the one that's going to help you through it, who's that coach you're going to choose? I'll say probably Nelson. He's a big numbers and stats guy. I- that was getting Nelson too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like he has a really good memory. Like he'll remember stuff that yeah. I'm like, how do you remember that? Like he'll remember mm-hmm. a specific statistic from like two that like so long ago that I'm like like January 18th, 2006. He can pull yeah. something up and he's he'll like just say it. Yeah. And I'm like, how do you know that? Yeah. But probably Nelson. Mm-hmm. Love it. There love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we let you go, uh, once, le- once, uh, excuse me, before we let you go, what's one last thing that you'd like to share with Panther fans? Thank you for all the support all the time. Um, we've had a lot of like good attendance this year, which has been really fun for home games. And we always just really appreciate seeing everyone and saying hi. Um, it's just really nice. Agreed. I just like, thanks for the, the continued support. Um, it's meant a lot, even in the roller coaster every year so far um you know obviously we're gonna do our best and hopefully keep that win streak going so uh just like thanks for all the support and yeah go cats for your free throws your next free throw that you make this friday either like just live a little pound your chest or maybe an old la clippers you know fist bump to your head And, and if you do one of those things we're going to know that you're going to honor that next free throw the Randy and I. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. You can make that right. happen. Okay. I'll, I'll be at the game, so I'm going to watch. Uh, you know, you know, Chuck, just doing this show and, and uh, visiting with the student athletes, once again, it just, it reveals that our coaches in the Cedar Valley uh, bring together a, a great team, obviously every year, great kids. And, and you two guys just resemble that. And it's good for our listeners to get to know more about you than just watching you on the basketball floor. I mean, they get to learn, you know, your majors, they get to learn your favorite foods, all that fun stuff, which is kind of cool. So, but uh, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, good luck in the future and go, go Panthers. And now for the financial architects quote of the week, the bad news is time flies. The good news is you are the pilot. Do you feel like you have control over time? Well, um, <laughs> you you have you have control over what you do during the day. Okay. For the for the most part, until the kids decide to do something different, right? Or the family, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we went to um, Chicago this past weekend for a little localish oh. kind of family. Uh, vacation and yeah and i told my boys we would go to the maybe go to the field museum and they both kind of crossed their arms and they're like ah oh, we don't want to learn <laughs> 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 so we ended up going to like a bulls game or some stuff instead <laughs> yeah. same thing same thing yeah yeah so i try to control i try to control it doesn't work all the time but yeah i will tell you as as a pilot of of our own plane here um yeah you know, I, I i do my, try our best to like make sure we have good family time together but as far as trying right. to control uh, the length of time, I f- it's like impossible. I feel like it goes by way too fast and uh, just wanted to last forever, right? Right, absolutely. And I, I tell you what, like you, like you just said, the, the families grow up way too fast today. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I'm, I suppose my parents felt the same way, but I definitely feel that like my kids and now my grandkids, they're just, just poof. They're 14 years old. Yeah. You know, so. It's crazy. Yeah. 15, 20 more years, you're going to be a, a great grandfather. I'm going to be a, a great, hopefully I'm a great grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Anyway, slice. <laughs> great quote. Good for you. Good for me. Good to everybody. Um, now it's time to say goodbye from Chuck and Randy. See you next week. Enter the closing music. <laughs>